Hey everyone, it's your girl Nikki, No Chaser here. So, I recently came across this video by Kevin Samuels. It's a few months old, but it's new to me and I thought it was very intriguing. And so, he's simply asking a question, can a baby's mama a woman with children, can she get a high value man? Let's share the entire video and a link below so that you can see it for yourself and, you know, come up with your own conclusions. And as I was watching it, there just was like key things that stood out to me. I want the high value man to put a ring on it before he gets it. So I'm going to do an analysis of Kevin Samuels as well as an analysis of the caller. I'm going to dissect this video. We're going to do this no chaser style, just straight up. Well, uh, first off, are you a, do you have children? I do. I'm a baby mama. You're you a baby, baby mama. mama. Are you, are you like a Fantasia baby mama or are you like a Brandy baby mama? Two different songs. I, I like both of them. Okay. So I can't put it down. How many children that. do you have? I have one. Okay. And, and how old are you? I'm 30. Are you married? I am not. I'm a baby mama. Okay. I'm... So what my question initially was, is there any chance for you baby mamas to get a high value man? And if so, what should you have to do? What do you have to say on the subject? So I feel like, I feel like I am attracting high value men. Um, the guy that I'm talking to, I've been talking to him for like six months and he is marriage minded. And he does throw out, you know, questions and do you stuff have a son or I... do you have a son or a daughter? I have a daughter. Okay. And your daughter's how old? Seven. Okay. So he's yeah. marriage minded? Yes. He he's marriage minded. And so I mean, of course, you know, it's six months now, so it might be to the point where we should probably be be exclusive. And so there's this caller that he was talking to. She's celibate, 30 years old, and she's been in an ambiguous sort of relationship with this high value man. And so she was simply asking about the possibility of marriage, a possibility of the relationship moving in a direction that is favorable to her at this point. That doesn't compute. How, you're right. How can he be marriage minded and you're not exclusive? No, we're not exclusive. Like he's made comments about you know, me being his wife, I want you to be my wife. Are you guys sexually just... active? No, we haven't had sex. Okay. Why? Why? Because I don't get, I'm stingy. I'm stingy with the, with the books. Excuse me? <laughs> I'm stingy with it. I do not give it up easily. Were you married to your, yeah. were you married to your daughter's, you were a baby mama though, right? A baby mama. I've never been married. No, but I just okay, don't. So let, I know. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let, let's talk about this though. See, um, I find it funny that women like yourself, baby mamas, all of a sudden want to get stingy with the <laughs> after you done gave your womb up before a ring. But then you want the high value men to put a ring on it before he gets it? So am I supposed to give it away? You got the <laughs> already did. Because here's the thing. See, that's what I mean. <clears throat> Man. You're a used vehicle wanting brand new 2021 prices. You can laugh all you want to, ma'am, but you just said six months. You're not even exclusive. You're talking about he's marriage minded. What do you think he's inserting his, his hand? No, that's the thing. He could be inserting it somewhere else. Exactly, because here's the thing. Men with options don't play these games. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you what you have to do but i'm telling you that if you're telling us or telling me that you have had sex with a man and had a child outside of marriage and then you go into the dating market and telling another guy you got to pay a higher price than this other guy did his the child's what happened. father let me, you, let, me, let me go ahead and play the magic yeah. eight ball for you when you finally decide to to give it up to him he's gonna take it and he's gonna split because men do not like to be played like this that's good yes I, my guess is you've already blown this men do not like to be played like this. He has investments in this, so he wants to get the tail. But you, I don't know, here's the thing. 
I don't know why. Well, I do know why. You've heard this from Steve Harvey and all these other dating gurus, but you know what? No men follow Steve Harvey. And so to sum it up, Kevin Samuels basically tells her that since she has not have se since she is not giving sex to this high value man, which she so deserves that she's going to miss out on a relationship because she is simply playing games. And he says that like, you know, because she has a child, he is deeming her as not exactly worthy of a high value man. And that somehow her not having sex with him is going to diminish or lower her chances. Here's where you go from here. Are you listening? You listening? Don't, don't f this up playing games. My initial response to this video, my initial reaction to this video was to feel a sense of like anger because of the things that was being said to this woman. And like, I initially just felt very bothered by the things that was not only being said to her and also just the mindset of Kevin Samuels. Okay. And so the Lord had to show me though, he had to really show me that there are two systems in operation here in this earth. There's a system of the world and there's a system of the kingdom of God. And so for me to be upset for someone who is speaking from a worldly perspective, you know, it's not really, it's not really fair to get angry. However, I'm going to shed light. So hopefully it could be encouraging and bring awareness to a young woman who has heard what he said and who's feeling compelled to give in to having sex in order to keep a man. So for the most part, what do I mean by worldly versus a kingdom mindset? Well, a worldly mindset, it only focuses on the temporary things. It focuses on the things of this earth. And I have a primary scripture that I'm about to say. Mark chapter 8 verses 36 through 38. And it says, what can a man profit if he gains the whole world? and loses his soul? Or what could a man give in exchange for his soul? So let that verse just ruminate with you, okay? It leads me to the first point that I'm about to make, not only about Kevin Samuels, but about what is a high valued man? Because I hear it being said a lot, I heard it a lot in this video. So I had to go to a different video to actually find out what is Kevin Samuel's definition of a high valued man? And so there were six descriptions that Kevin Samuels gave to define a high valued man in his opinion. So the first part is that the man is making at least $10,000 a month according to the Georgia Atlanta standards. So $10,000 per month it is the first defining description of a high valued man making $10,000 per month. The next one is length and time. So Samuels gave the man three to five years for his money to flourish, for his business to really take off, for his money to really accumulate and be right. The third one is group acceptance. So basically he is a part of a high valued group. He is associated with people that are well known, people that are well to do. He's a part of some sort of organization, some sort of secret club or secret organization where you have to be a somebody in order to be a part of that organization. Part four is a networking man. So again, he has to be with a creme de la creme. He has to be with people who are networking, people who are wealthy, people who are business minded, people who are very well known and very powerful and people who could make phone calls and, you know, get things moving, get things to happen. And then number five is visibility and income of LinkedIn level. And so it's basically someone who is well known and their profession and everything is that that is highly esteemed. It is a highly esteemed career. It is a highly esteemed reputation that can be verifiable and that is very professional and that is very praiseworthy and noteworthy in a professional settings from a business standpoint and from the social elite. And lastly, number six is utility. 
Is the man very resourceful? Is he giving money to a group that he is a part of? Is he sharing money? Is he very like stingy with his money? And so all six of those was how he defined a high valued man. And just based off of those alone, that sounds like an excellent employee. That sounds like an excellent business partner. But those qualities does not make a good man, let alone a good husband. So I just had to find out for myself, okay, what is a high valued man that all these women are calling to make sure that they get? And all those qualities alone, it is just basically about monetary gain. It's about a person's social aspect or networking. It's about their the value of their dollar. It is about their reputation. It is about, it is ultimately about finances. And those do not necessarily make a good man in general. Basically to sum it all up, Kevin Samuels has an elitist mindset. A group of persons who by virtue of position or education exercise much power or influence members of the ruling elite. An elitist is one who is an adherent of elitism, one whose attitudes and beliefs are biased in favor of a socially elite class of people. So, AKA, he is a snob, okay? I'm telling you, as a man, as a high value man who have high value men, clients and friends, this- To sum it all up, why do I say this? Because from him talking to the woman, he already determined their social classes. His first question to the woman is, are you a baby's mama? I find it funny that Women like yourself, baby mamas, all of a sudden want to get stingy with the puss. He already had a view of her based on her being a baby's mama. You're lucky to have somebody even dealing with you, especially somebody at his level, and you're playing games with him? There are younger women out without children out there who are not putting him through this. And so then... The next part that really stood out to me was that he already determined that because her man is considered high value, therefore he is a good man. No, no, no. This is what I, you're, this woman's playing games. She's got a man, sounds like a decent man, and she's slow playing him. And ultimately it's because she got her own money. And if he needs something, he can go get it from somewhere else. Brother, I hope you do go get it from somewhere else. This is gonna be that. We're all a good man. All these dusties and crusties and downloads. And I can't get this, can't get that. You've heard about him on the channel. Anytime I talk to a woman in their mid early, their mid to late 30s, early 40s, I can't find no good man and then find out what? You didn't had one, but you slow played him. And so he told her by not having sex with this man who is of high value, that she's going to miss out on a good man. Nowhere. In there, has she ever described their relationship? She described conversations. So he's yeah. marriage minded? Yes, he's marriage minded. And so, I mean, of course, you know, it's six months now. So it might be to the point where we should probably be, be exclusive. But he hasn't actually asked me to be whoa, exclusive. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Father in the life? Yeah, he's in, his, he's in her life. Is he a high value man? I would say so. No, no. Yeah, but is he but... making ten thousand dollars a month or more? No. Then he's not a high value man. Is the guy that you've been with six months who's non exclusive making ten thousand yeah. dollars a month or more? Yeah, he is. So in other words, the the broke wound for free, but the rich can't even get. This is crazy. But she never described the relationships and how the man treated her. So to automatically say that this man is good because he makes about $10,000 a month that he networks, how does that make him good? That's a very elitist answer, a very elitist mindset. And so basically from the sounds of things, as he's talking to the woman, he sizes up her value. He tells her that pretty much since she has already had a child, her value has decreased. He's telling her that because you have had a child, you are a used up, and I quote, you are a used up 
vehicle that's trying to rack up your prices of as if you were a new vehicle. And so he's telling her that there's no point in you valuing your body and keeping yourself when you have a high class man who can get any woman that is a newer model than you. And actually what's interesting that there are classic cars that are even worth more in value than newer cars. According to the Barrett Jackson's company, there are classic cars that are in working condition and that are worth way more than newer models. And so, you know, just to tell someone that he places more value in the person's um, economic status versus then in a person's characteristics to tell her that her value is lower than the man of high value just based off of their earnings and their social status. You, you're approaching this like you are in the power position in a negotiation. Do you make more than him? I do. There you go. You know, like that's, wow. Like I, I'm kind of at a loss for words. Like even though I'm saying a lot right now, it's just like, it is a lot to take in, okay? To like mentally digest. I know this is from a worldly perspective. This is not from a man of God. And I'm going to assess her in a second. I just had to just like get like to like the, the meat and potatoes of this. So Samuels places higher value on economic status, on materialisms versus human beings. Because that man was already determined to be a good man because of his earnings, because of his social status. Never mind characteristics, which I'm going to get to. But those things alone was dangled over the woman's head as if she was going to miss out on her Prince Charming with a bank account. I have this perfect scripture also that talks about the mindset. And so hopefully this convict anyone who has an elitist mindset. So it's over in Luke chapter 12, verse 13 to 21. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide with me the property our father left us. So it's family inheritance. But Jesus said to him, Man, who said I should judge or decide between you? Then Jesus said to them, Be careful and guard against all kinds of greed. Life is not measured by how much one owns. Then Jesus told this story. It was a parable. There was a rich man who had some land which grew a good crop. He thought to himself, what will I do? I have no place to keep all of my crops. Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and other goods. Then I can take, then I can say to myself, I have enough goods stored up to last for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and enjoy life. But God said to him, foolish man, tonight your life will be taken from you. So who will get those things you have prepared for yourself? This is how it would be for those who store up things for themselves and are not rich toward God. And so, yes, we're putting high value on people based on their economic status, based on how much they have in the bank, based on their social circles with men. But spiritually, what do you have stored up? Because you're not taking any of that stuff with you when you die. When you leave this earth, it's, somebody else is going to be driving that car. That Benz, that Maserati, that Bugatti. Someone is going to be driving your luxury vehicle. Someone is going to live in your mansion, in your penthouse, in one of your houses somewhere, on an island somewhere. Someone else is going to be living in there. Someone else is going to be wearing your red bottoms. Someone else is going to be wearing your Chanel. Someone else is going to be wearing your Gucci, your Prada, your Versace, 
whatever it is, someone else is going to wear that when you leave here. You cannot take that with you. So picking a man based off of stuff that is not going to profit him anything. It's not really going to profit him anything. And I know like in the world system, the dollar is losing its value. Okay. And so I'm just saying, choose where you're going to invest. Choose that person wisely who you're going to invest in. We ask her because she has already been with the man and have produced a child with the man. He asked her about the man that she was with and determined that he was of lower value because of his economic earnings, which was never disclosed by the way. He asked her, is he a high valued man? And he determined that the man that she had a child with, presumably like about almost eight years ago of her child's life, that that man is somehow lower in status compared to the man of higher value. And that if she was willing to bust it open for a man of lower value, surely she should have already by now busted it open for a man of higher value. Yeah, he's in, his life. He's in her life. Is he a high value man? I would say so. No, no, yeah, but is he but... making $10,000 a month or more? No. Then he's not a high value man. Is the guy that you've been with six months who's non-exclusive making ten thousand dollars a month or more? Yeah, he is. So in other words, the the broke boom for free, but the rich can't even get. This is crazy. And it's like, wow! Like for all we know, like that just because their relationship did not work out. How long were you with the child, your father, your child's father, your baby daddy? <laughs> How long were y'all together? Probably four years. Four together before you got pregnant. Oh, uh, about a year. So you've been with him for six months. He can't get no coochie. You were with this lower earning man for a year and he can get a baby. I was young. Yeah. Oh, see, let me stop you right there. That's of her father who she was with for several years. That does not make him any less of a person, any less of valuable. Like it's because in the kingdom of God, okay, and you don't have to be religious. You don't even, you know, if you're not a Christian, whatever, but in the kingdom of God, value is placed on the human being rather than the material possessions. Because the Lord tells us that life does not consist in the abundance of things that a man possesses. So your life does not, con does not consist and your material gain, nor your material loss. Because why? Your identity should be rooted and founded in Christ. And father of the child is perceived as lower value. And so at this point, it's like Samuel is interjecting himself in a woman's dating situation. Like he's been telling us or telling me that you've had sex with a man and had a child outside of marriage. And then you go into the dating market and telling another guy, you got to pay a higher price than this other guy did. But then you're with a higher value man and you won't even have sex. You're not a child. You're 30, right? Six months, ma'am. It's not six days. It's manipulation. He's basically offended for the man to not have got his sex, okay? He's like, you know, it's been six months. It's not six days. Are you a child? And he's basically telling her, you're playing games. You're being manipulative. And the man's only going to smash and dash. And that the man is probably getting sex from elsewhere as he, quote unquote, deserves to because you're not giving it to him. You're already a baby's mama. Woody, woody, woo. And so it's just like... It is it's very elitist and it's, it's, man, I'm surprised she did not hang up in his face by the time he got through calling her a used up vehicle. Like, I'm surprised that there was not a dial tone, to be honest with you. But I know that, you know, women, women want to, they like drama. So they want to hear what this man has to say because he says very outlandish things and like I said, I don't have nothing against him personally. I just identify that he is an elitist. That is who he is. And so to really get concrete dating advice from someone who is an elitist, it doesn't seem like you're going to get the best dating advice, maybe for networking, maybe for business, but dating, 
This is going to lead me to the analysis of the color now. Are good qualities about her. The first one is that, yes, she is celibate, that she is taking the time out to not just give her body to anyone, that she is making herself a priority as far as waiting to have sex with. The next one is that she takes responsibilities because she's raising her seven-year-old daughter, that she actually made the choice to step up to being a mother, which is commendable. Like, in my opinion, that shouldn't diminish your value. That should show that you are responsible and that you can care for someone other than yourself. The next one is that she realizes her mistakes, that she realizes that in the past, like, yes, yeah, she probably wasn't ready to have a child or anything, but she took responsibility and she acknowledges where she was and that she sees where she wants to be. So those are very good qualities, but homegirl is silly. I'm going to measure this by scripture. Yes, she's in the world, but the scripture gives a perfect example of what's going on right here. So I'm going to read it. So it's over in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and it's verses 1 through 7, but I'm going to focus I'm going to focus on verses 1 and jump down to verses So I'm going to focus on verse 1 and then drop down to verses 6 and 7. So it is 1 through 7. You could check that out just for time's sake. I'm going to condense it and get to the major points. And it tells us, but understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that will be hard to bear for people will be lovers of self, narcissistic, self-focused, lovers of money, impelled by greed, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. Then I'm going to jump down to verses six through seven. For among them are those who warm their way. Okay, so verse three. For among them are those who worm their way into houses and captivate morally weak and spiritually dwarf women weighed down by burdens of their sins, easily swayed by various impulses, always learning and listening to anybody who would teach them, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, I'm going to define Kevin Samuels based on this description. He seems to be a bit self-centered, possibly narcissistic. And definitely a lover of money. Definitely a lover of money. Pretty boastful and arrogant. And so, just like a magnet, it a magnet and metal, it attracts silly women. This collar is the definition of what a silly woman is. Now, a silly one, a silly woman is someone who is considered immature, who is considered, you know, gullible. They go for what's being told to them. And someone who's also considered and a little bit weak-minded. And so this is why I say what I say about the caller. So I'm calling her silly because, number one, she's 30 years old and she's still talking to somebody. They're not in, a, they're not in an exclusive or committed relationship. They are talking. At the age of 30, and you're still saying that you're talking, that's not a real relationship. What are you talking about at 30 that requires six months? In all honesty. And so she's saying that he brings up marriage and he asks her questions. But yet, Kevin Samuels brought up a good point. They're not in a committed, exclusive relationship. That doesn't compute. How, you're right. How can so he be marriage-minded and you're not exclusive? No, we're not exclusive. Like he's made comments about, you know, me being his wife. I want you to be my wife. Are you guys oh, that's a humongous leap from where they are to getting down the aisle. And so that part already is silly in itself because at the age of 30, you should either be in a relationship or you should be engaged if if you're not married. And this is for people who are out there on the dating scene. But to be talking, that's like high school stuff. Like that's like, what, 18, 19, 20 stuff at 30. 
talking should that shouldn't even amuse you anymore talking you know and i'm not trying to judge anybody's like just worth and all that stuff i'm saying simply we are talking that shouldn't even be a part of your vocabulary anymore the next part is, is that she places value on herself based off of this man i know she says that she makes more money than him but she's basing her worth and her value off of the type of man that she can date and so since she perceives that he is higher value she feels that she is lucky to have him to be in his presence and she doesn't really value herself that much like i know she's celibate and i know that you know she's keeping herself i don't know if it's for marriage or if it's for the the 90 day period well it's been six months so it's been past 90 days i don't know exactly what could be the real thing right there and then i also say that she's silly because she's asking kevin samuels for dating advice when he just described a person's resume that would make them an awesome employee that would make them an awesome business partner an awesome networking partner but nothing about qualities that deem marriage material that deems a good partner a good role model a good father figure for her child i have heard none of those things and so you ask him for dating advice when he just gave you an excellent ceo like a person over like a fortune 500 company it's like going to a brain surgeon for a cavity like they're smart they know what to do in their field but to cross over and talk about another field i highly doubt that they're going to give you the best help that is needed she's being very gullible very weak-minded and it's just sad because it's like kevin samuels to me reminds me of those cartoons where you have the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder and he reminds me of the the devil cartoon and i'm not saying that he's a devil but i'm saying that his advice is very condescending and it's not uplifting did you ever think of it this way or are you thinking of it like most women, like you're in the power position? You, 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 you're approaching this like you are in the power position in the negotiation. Do you make more than him? I do. There you go. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Right there. You make more even... you make more than him, but you had baby for a lesser man. Woo! Basically tell somebody that your value is low, the men that you are with are low, and this man is high value, and you're gonna mess it up because you're not having sex with him. He deserves sex, the other man didn't deserve sex, and that you know, you're gonna miss out on a great guy that he has never met because you will not compromise having sex with him. And honestly, girl, I'm not promoting sex outside of marriage, but if you're trying to have sex with a person to keep them, it's not going to work because they have to want you. They have to want to be with you. And if they already don't want to be with you, sex will not change their mind. And I'm gonna tell you in the words of what my mom would say, <laughs> if they're gonna leave, basically if they're gonna bail you might as well keep your tail if they're gonna leave you anyways because honestly i don't think he's in it to win it he's not in it to win it six months you don't have a title six months you don't know what you are to him he's not in it to win it. he's not staying with you i'm i'm sorry to break it to you it doesn't take this long it doesn't take this long to to stop talking and to start doing. You're still talking. There's nothing being done. And I mean, I know pun intended. And so for Kevin Samuel to say that you need to start giving up your stuff for a man who hasn't even ever made no commitment to you, let alone put a ring on it. Girl, you better off keeping your cookie and bouncing, okay? Like, please. I don't know if you've done it by now. I don't know what the status quo is. And like, girl, just no, no, no. And to say that you're manipulative because you're not having sex with him. He's manipulative too because he won't give you a title. But yet he keeps dangling the possibility of having a future over your head. So there's both manipulation going on if anybody wants to call anything manipulation. And lastly, I'll pose a question. 
When you're hired for a job, do you get paid right then and there as soon as you are hired? Or do you have to put in the work and then receive your paycheck at the appropriate time? Just do they give it to you up front? Or do you have to put in the work and prove yourself before you get any money, any benefits? And I'm not saying to have sex outside of marriage. Please do not believe that I'm saying that. But I'm saying that that's not being manipulative. That is knowing her worth. And if a man does not want to be with you because he is not having sex with you, that's pretty much what he was after in the first place. And so you really didn't lose anything. And I hope that whoever else has watched it, you know, a good godly man has different values than men of the world. And so men of the world, this is what you're going to get. And I'm talking to save women who try to go out there and get them the high valued man. And that reminds me of a characters from the Tyler Perry movies that are high valued men, but make terrible partners. Okay. Make terrible spouses. And the guy who has a blue collar job, who is a humble and decent working man. And he loves God. He loves his woman. He loves his family. And no, he may not live in a penthouse. He may not live in a big mansion. He may not drive the latest whip or a very, I don't know, like a very classy car that like, you know, makes people envious. He may not have a lucrative bank account. He may not have the connections with the who's who's, but he's a decent, hardworking man who loves the Lord who is honest and integral and who's going to stand by his woman through thick and thin and will not cheat on her or trade her in for another model. If you like that high value nonsense, go for it. Go for it. There may be some high valued men that love the Lord. And again, it falls to love in the Lord. It has nothing to do with the person's bank account, but with their soul, with their internal being, what their core values are, what their beliefs are, how they're going to treat you, how they're going to love you, protect you, fight for you, stand up for you, be faithful to you. And if you want a bank account instead of all those other qualities, then you deserve what's coming to you. Value yourself because you determine that a man is high value, that he's too good for you because he's going to look at you the same way. And so don't let men like Kevin Samuels and all these gurus that are luring silly women into all these talk shows, all these podcasts, talk you into leaving quality to go after quantity, leaving a person's like characteristics that's of uh, quality to go after a person's bank account, which is of quantity. If they have more in their bank account than they do in their persons, you need to exit. To the left, to the left. But you know, nah, you, nah. So yeah, subscribe to my channel. Check out my Instagram page. It's Nikki underscore no underscore chaser. So y'all stay blessed. Later.